To review what we learned in part one, the EV charging infrastructure begins at your service panel, the place where electricity from the grid gets distributed to all the circuits in your house. A charging circuit is run from the service panel in your basement or garage to the location where you'll be charging your EV. Then, depending on the type of EV you have, you'll either need a 240 volt receptacle, like a NEMA 1450, or a charging unit, properly called Electrical Vehicle Serv Service Equipment, EVSE. Because the EVSE could double or even triple the peak load for your house, it's important to analyze your overall energy requirements to ensure that your existing electrical service can accommodate EV charging. An EV can draw as much or more power as a central air conditioning unit. There are, however, a wide variety of service load calculators that can be found online. Use one if you're unsure of your service requirements. A worst case scenario is if your house doesn't have adequate electrical service. If your service panel can't handle the extra load of an EVSE, you're going to have to install new service and a new panel. That's expensive. So a quick check now can eliminate costly surprises later, particularly if your house is older. In most cases, however, adding a charging circuit is fairly simple. It will require adding a new circuit and a breaker to your service panel, running the appropriate cable and making all EVSE connections. That work should be done by a licensed electrician. Choose a 30 amp EVSE. It provides the fastest charging and leaves room for any future needs. Be sure you place the EVSE near the garage door if possible. This will allow you to charge your EV while it's parked in the driveway. Get the longest cord length for the charging cable that is recommended. No need to worry about reaching the EV charge port either in the garage or outside of it. There are a variety of installation videos available on YouTube. The link shown on your screen is representative of many. But what if you don't have a garage? EV chargers can be installed outdoors. You'll need to run an outdoor circuit to the place where you park your car. And you'll need an EVSE with a NEMA 4X or 3R rating for outdoor use. But be aware that long runs of electrical cable are quite expensive. For example, a number 64 electrical cable recommended for 240 volt 40 amp circuits costs close to $4 a linear foot. Unless you own a Tesla Model S, which has its own charging connector design, your EV will likely use a J1772 charging connector if you're located in the United States. The connector, shown on the right of your screen, has the following lay layout. Two prongs that provide AC power, usually 240 volt 30 amp. A proximity detector to make sure that the plug is seated in, a, in the charger receptacle. A ground and a communications connector that enables the EV to communicate with the EVSE about the state of battery charge and other data. Now for a little bad news. Installation costs are non-trivial and include the cost of materials, an, electric, uh, an electrician, and charging equipment, the EVSE. Installation cost is a function of the distance between your service panel and the charging location and typically runs between $400 and $1,000 for labor and material. However, costs vary widely throughout the country, so it's a good idea to get a quote early. A high quality EVSE typically costs between $500 and $1,000. Good news for Tesla Model S owners, your only cost is the circuit and a NEMA 1450 receptacle receptacle. But for other EVs, the additional cost of the EVSE is required. So depending on your EV and the equipment you'll need, typical costs will range from $400 to $1,800.
Luckily, it only happens once. To summarize, a home charging infrastructure begins at your service panel and ends at your EV. In order to get the best charging efficiency, a 240 volt 30 or 40 amp circuit is strongly recommended. For many smaller EVs, an EVSE may be necessary. Professional installation is required. And one-time all-in costs can range from $400 to $1,800.